Wow, what a great shoot. I can't wait to start editing some of the awesome 4K 10-bit 60 frames a second footage that we filmed today. I'll be done before the end of the day. I'm ready. Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we are talking about proxies. And when I say proxies, I don't just mean any proxies. I'm talking about built-in camera proxies. First off, I have to admit, I'm a little embarrassed to say that I actually didn't know this was a setting for the longest time. I've been shooting on Sony for years, and it was only last year that I started utilizing this awesome feature. I don't know what it was about it. I somehow, I guess, skipped over the setting, or I just thought it didn't work the same as Premiere proxies. And the first time I tried it, I realized I should never go back. It blew my mind the way that this works. Not only has this saved me hours of time, but it's also sped up our same day edit process. So why would you want to use proxies? To give you a quick overview about proxies, proxies are basically a low res, easier to edit version of your high bit rate 4K footage. I love using proxies because it means basically any computer can be used for editing. Now I have a pretty nice laptop, pretty nice desktop, and they still will sometimes struggle with multi-cam 4K 10-bit footage. So me having proxies has allowed Premiere to speed up the process so I'm not having to worry about my footage buffering and I'm not waiting a long time for stuff to load. The, the footage is super buttery smooth to edit through and to be honest when you're inside of Premiere and you're just looking at that small editing window you really can't even tell much of a difference in the quality so it's not going to mess up anything that you're doing as far as you know, editing, color correction, things like that. So the way I used to create proxies is probably how many other people create proxies. I would bring in all my footage into Premiere, I would import it all, organize it all, and then overnight or just while I was doing something else, I would encode all of that footage to create proxies inside of Premiere. This isn't a bad process. If you do it overnight or you have some time to kill, maybe it's not a huge waste of time, but it's still an extra step that you have to do. And for us, when we do weddings or events where there's a ton of footage, there's multiple cameras, it eats up a chunk of time that we didn't want to waste. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through what we do now with proxies and how it all starts with the camera itself. So you're going to want to go to your menu. I've actually made this a favorite settings on mine. And you're going to go to proxy settings. And you're going to want to make sure it's turned on. Once it's turned on, you have two options. You have a 720p version and you have a 1080p version. Now you might be wondering which one you should use. So if you're strictly using these four proxies, you might as well go as small as you can and that would be the 720p version. These files are super small in size and they're going to be super, super easy for almost any computer to edit on. So that's what I choose. Now there's an exception to this rule. and. Like I was saying, we're gonna to put together a same day edit video where we'll cover this a little bit more. But essentially what we'll do with the same day edit is if we don't need to broadcast in 4K, we will actually do the 1080p version. And this has actually been helpful for some of our corporate clients too where they might be using some of the content for social media. Let's say we produce a really nice video for them that's filmed in 4K, but they also wanna have the raw footage and they just don't have the kind of computers to work with our 4K raw footage. Now they have a 1080p version that we can provide them with and we don't have to do any extra steps to give that to them. We just hand over the card and here's your 1080p version, here's your 4K version. So there is a purpose to the 1080p that you could do, but if you're strictly using these for proxies, I would recommend just doing the lowest file size possible, which would be the 720p. Now what is cool about the 1080p, if you do go that route, you're actually gonna have two options. Both of them are 10-bit, they're 420 instead of 422, which is a little different, but for the most part, it's gonna be pretty much the same thing, just not 4K and not quite as high of a file size or quality. Now you might be wondering, what does this mean for your card? So you definitely wanna make sure you have a fast enough card for this. Um, we just have some Lexar cards they get the job done, they're 256 gigs, and I'll have both of those inside of my Sony camera, so there's a redundancy, and both cards will not only have the raw 4K footage, but will also have the proxy file. Okay, so here we are, and I just plugged in my card for my Sony camera. We're gonna go into the private folder. We're gonna go into M4 root, 
And there's going to be two in here, so if you're not used to doing proxies, you probably know that you need to get your footage out of the clip folder. Well, we're also going to want to grab this folder right here called sub. So as you can see, about 56.5 gigs of footage. It was 4K, 24 frames a second, 10 bit, and it was condensed down to 3.47 gigs of proxy files. So if I go inside here, I want to of course grab whatever's from the project, and then I will also want to grab the proxies that go along with that. All right, so I brought in my footage. Now I'm gonna to wanna to import my file. So what I would probably do is organize it a little bit more. Something like that. Put my proxies in here, my raw footage in here, and then I'm gonna import my raw footage into Premiere. And as you can see, it's already kind of choppy, not running super, super smooth. But that's all right, because we got proxies, we can attach this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on my footage. I'm gonna go to proxies, attach proxies. We're gonna look for the number 0371, attach. Now we don't wanna attach it with the raw footage. We wanna look for the proxy. So as you can see, this one's it, and there's an SO3 after it. Now. What's gonna happen is you're gonna to have to do this with every clip because Premiere reads proxy files, not as SO3, but underscore proxy. Basically, there's two ways to go about this. You could manually reconnect every clip. So this one does not have a proxy. So I would need to right click, go to proxy, and basically rinse and repeat. This is fine if you're working with like five clips or so, but for us, most of the projects we do, there is a ton of footage. So for me to do this would probably take more time than just to make the proxies inside of Premiere. So how I'm gonna save you on time here is I'm going to open up Shutter Encoder. So if you don't have Shutter Encoder yet, be sure to download this free software and it's honestly very powerful for what it is. Um, not only can it do what I'm gonna be showing you today, but it can also create proxies. You could convert your footage into different types of file sizes, different types of files, things like that. Super powerful tool and it's totally free, so make sure you have this on your computer. I'm going to go grab my proxies I'm gonna drag these here. And what I'm gonna do is I wanna control A or select all, right click. And I'm gonna to go to rename the files. So what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to get rid of that SO3 and we're wanting to add underscore proxy. So right here I'm gonna type S03 and then underscore proxy goes here. So essentially what um, Shutter Encoder is going to do is it's going to replace the S03 that's in the text and it's going to replace it with underscore proxy. So I'm going to hit rename. So now those are going to be renamed here. And to give you an idea of how much time this saves, let me do this with a large batch of footage. Select all. I'm going to right click. I'm going to rename files s03 underscore proxy rename now let's bring all of this footage into premiere and now we're going to make sure all of it's selected attach proxies c0364 click there and done, they all have proxies. So what do you think of this feature? Do you plan on starting to record internally into your cameras? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found no helpful information from this video, please subscribe so then you can watch our next video, which will hopefully be helpful for you. Till next time, we'll see ya.